Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm going to be teaching you why Discord Connector is the most important mod for any multiplayer Valheim server. In this video, I'll show you how to make your server push all in-game shouts to Discord. I'll even show you how to set up a custom channel, do the webhook in Discord, and make it so when a player logs in, logs out, or dies, it shows up. You'll even be able to make this little player log, which tells you exactly who is playing online, when the people play, and when they die. It is absolutely incredible. Before, you need to tell other people that you're on the server. But now, you just be on the server, die, play stuff, talk, and then other people know. You see this conversation here? This is with two of the current players, Ingmund Ash and Alex Hu. They have both given me their permission to share their names and everything and show you this. And then you can see this output to Discord. And it's not just shouts. You'll also get notifications when people die. There we go, I'm no more. And as soon as I respawn, boom, look at that. JP Valheim is overwhelmed and falls under the onslaught. Skull icons. I died at 1.05 p.m. on March 23rd on Saturday. <laughs> if you've ever worked with a server before, you might start to be grappling why I'm really telling you this mod is the best mod. What mod? makes the game better without the clients having to even install it. That, that almost sounds like it shouldn't exist, and that's why I'm telling you, Discord Connector is the best mod for Valheim multiplayer servers. Now, don't get me wrong, if you play on single player, or you just play with like one other person, then this mod isn't gonna be that useful. Okay, actually, that's not even true. It's gonna log everything you do. It's gonna put a whole history in Discord of every time you played and died and everything. That's amazing. Even then, it's still useful. <laughs> you see what I mean? But let's act like the logs aren't useful. Well, in that case, the single player people might not get the true benefit because the true benefit is that on a multiplayer server, there's people who want to play together. But then when they log in, nobody else is online, right? So they have to tell other people. What if that step is just removed? It's all automated. That's what Discord Connector does. And I've been itching to make a video about this just to show you everything you need to set this up because it's one of those things that is really worth doing. It's going to enable the players of the server to play together more often and they won't even need to install it. Now that you have a solid grasp of why this is so important, let's get into how to actually configure everything yourself. Because it took me a while to learn how to do this, and I want to make the process as easy as possible for you. Because I really believe in the power of this mod. Download the Discord connector mod from your preferred source. I usually use Thunderstore. And then within that download file, you will find 4.dll files. And the installation is a little bit different because this is a server-side mod, not a client-side mod. So you don't even need to put it on your own computer. You just need to put it on your server. I'm going to show you how I do it with the server host provider that I use, but you may use a different server host, or you may use your own dedicated server, like a different computer you have lying around. In all of those cases, this will also work. It just means that the file will be put in a different place, okay? If you do use a dedicated server host, you have to make sure that you pick a host that has Bepinex servers. That's gonna make the process a lot easier. They have everything pretty much set up for you. So if you use Zap, then you would select this one here. And if you already have a Valheim server with Zap, you can flip it to the Bepinex version and go back and forth really easily. To do so, go down to settings and then games here. And then just click this change slot price button. It's gonna be the same slot price and then it'll add it here. And then you just have to click one of these buttons and that'll activate the current version of Valheim on the server. Don't worry, because just because you have the Bepinex server, it doesn't mean people need Bepinex. 
you can still have regular vanilla players log onto your server and they won't even know it's a Bepinax server. In my case, to access the server, I use file exchange. You can usually get the information from your server host provider of your choice, and if you were just using your own local server or another computer, then you can just browse it manually. What you're going to do is look in the Valheim Bepinex Linux section. If you have never started the server before, you would actually want to start the server and then turn it off to get it to generate the Bepinex files. You can find those files by going to Bepinex and then config here. This server already exists, so it has a lot more config files, but when you first start, this is gonna be the only config file here. And there's actually one really important setting that I'm gonna show you, because in my case, this setting stopped all mods from working, and once I flipped this setting, then everything worked. I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly what this does, but I will tell you none of the mods worked before, and then changing these two settings made them all work. The first is under Chain Loader. If enabled, hides the Bepinex Manager game object from Unity. This is defaulted to set to false, but for some reason in my server's case, that basically stops it from loading everything. So I had to set this to true. The next setting I also changed was under logging.console, and this is if enabled will prevent closing the console, and I set this to true. Either way, one of these two things fixed the problem. So if you're having issues, consider setting these values to true, okay? You'll launch your Bepinex, it'll generate this config, you'll adjust this as needed, which is just doing what I just showed you, and then you'll be able to actually add some plugins. Because you've launched Bepinex, you'll find that there's also this plugins folder here. And this is where you put all of the DLL files. And that's where we'll take the files that we download from our mod preference, Thunderstore in this case, for Discord connector, which are these four files here, and then I'll paste them on my desktop. So now all I have to do is refresh my desktop, and then all four of those files are here. System runtime, Newton Soft, Light DB, and Discord Connector. So you just drop those into your plugins folder, and then you want to disconnect from your server, turn it on, and then turn it back off. That's going to generate the config files, which is the bulk of what we're going to be working with. And you'll find that there's a whole bunch of configs under the folder Games and West Valheim Discord Connector. But before we can configure any of these, we need to set up our Discord webhook. To do this, you'll need some kind of Discord server or a spot on a Discord server so that you can create a channel. Create your channel and name it, and then it'll show up on the left here. Go to Edit Channel, and then go down to Integrations. You'll see this thing called a webhook. Create a webhook. We're gonna call it Tutorial Hook. Nice. And now you just copy this webhook URL, and boom, save changes, you're done. That is it. I, I know making a webhook may have sounded complicated, but in making this joke about webhooks, I've taken up more of your time than you actually making a webhook. It's really simple. If you want, you could add a photo or something, that'd be cool. And you have to do that because you need to tell Discord Connector where to push the messages to. Right? So how is it going to know that? Well, that's the webhook. And we'll start with the main Discord connector config. So let's edit this now. There's actually two places that you can plug in a webhook. The first is the primary URL, and then is the secondary URL. I actually encourage you to set up two webhooks. The reason for this is because you can have one channel that's for talking, that shows everything people say, and then you can have another channel that's to quickly look at and see who is on the server and how many people are playing. Add the first webhook here to your primary URL, and then the second webhook here to this URL. If you're only using one webhook, then leave the secondary webhook URL field blank. I'm going to show you how to set things up exactly as I have them set up, 
You'll have to learn more about these config files yourself if you want to set something else up. Underneath the primary webhook link, you need to specify which events to send there. I would recommend doing player join, player leave, player shout, player ping, and player death. This is the live server chat channel, which will show what people are saying and also show when they die and if they log out or log in. Next, we have the events that we want to show in the, the secondary channel. The next setting to change is to use embeds in the messages. This just makes them look a bit easier to read, so I recommend you use it. And then everything else can be just left at the default setting, except the very last one here. Send non-player shouts to Discord. This one you probably want to set to true, because if you don't set this, then anyone who's like an admin just won't show up in Discord. And with that, you'll save that config file. And now we'll move on to some of the other configs. I personally like it when I can clearly see what's happening without having to read anything. So that's why I like this server status. I can see here, one of these heart icons means somebody logged in, the skull means somebody died, and then a heart break icon means somebody logged off. So you can see a player logged in, a player logged in, a player logged in, and then I died. You can see that very easily. So I'll show you how to set all of this up. This feature here, where it shows the active players, is part of something in the mod called the leaderboards. The leaderboards are down here. They have their own config file. There's a lot more you can do with the leaderboards. I'm gonna ignore all of that, and I'm just gonna focus on this active players announcement. As a server manager, being able to see at a glance exactly when people are online, how often they logged online for weeks is insanely useful. So to enable that, we're gonna set this first value to true. Enable or disable the active player's announcement being sent to Discord. Then this next value, I make it 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, the server will say, this many players are on me. And then I enable this one here, enable or disable currently online players, but then I disable everything else. So no unique online players, no for the past week, and no for the fast past time. Really matters is just showing the person logged in at this time, they logged out at that time, and they died at that time. So now that we've set up this, we can save this file. At this point, we've configured this part here, the active player's message. This will start showing up. But we haven't changed any of these death messages, and we haven't added the icons that make the log easier to understand at a glance. All of those are handled in this config file here, Discord Connector Messages. This contains all the different text that is gonna get added to the shouts and sent to Discord. If you noticed earlier, there's actually some flavor text here. It doesn't just say JP Valheim says thanks, Ingman Dash says no problem. It says JP Valheim stubs their toe and shouts, Ingman Dash tries to calm the situation and says, JP Valheim stares for a moment before responding. This is comedic. <laughs> it's literally there just to make this weird flavor text that sometimes doesn't work, but at other times it works really well and is hilarious. This is the file that sets all of that up. But before I distract you with all these different possibilities, let's get to the, the, the core of the file, what you really need to understand. I personally ignore all of the event notifications, and I don't worry about that at all. Don't worry about the leading board message thing because we already set up the active player part, so we're done with leaderboards. I only focus on the messages player section. So you can see here, we can set the message that's sent when the player joins the server, when the player dies, when the player leaves the server, when the player pings the map, when a player shouts. There's this whole player first section, but you can just ignore that for now. Don't worry about that. Just focus on this section, the messages. And I understand that this, it probably seems a bit confusing because there's all of this text. So for clarity's sake, I'm gonna break this up in another program. <laughs> there we go. Now you might have a bit of a better sense of what's happening here. We have the death messages that can get sent. 
and it'll put the player name, and then it'll add some custom flavor text, and we add these skull icons here. I found that it works well to have the icon before and afterwards. When you look over, you can immediately see, okay, that person died. Whereas without this, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the players speaking and the players dying because it's all text. So I strongly encourage you to add icons to deaths, logins, and logouts because it makes them easy to distinguish. It's actually quite simple. It's just a list of phrases separated by a semicolon. A list of phrase separated by a semicolon. That's it over and over and over again. The semicolon tells the program to kind of pick from one of them. So you can say this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, etc, etc, etc. You can see that the server said JP Valheim is overwhelmed and falls under the onslaught, but then here, if you actually look at that line, it just says player name is overwhelmed and falls under the onslaught. These things are just placeholders, and you can use them to add flavor text to your server. You don't have to go anywhere near as excessive as we went. The other players on the server helped add a bunch of lore stuff and jokes to this, so we went a bit nuts. But I do encourage you to have at least the icon. I mean, you can see how obvious it is, I died, right? You can just immediately see the skull, you know I died. You scroll down, nobody else has died. You know that immediately. That's pretty useful. And th that's actually it, as far as configs go. You don't really need to mess with the toggles or the variables that much. It's probably going to work. And as I mentioned before, once you have all of this set up, all you have to do is save the config files, and then turn your server off, and turn it back on. You can edit and save the config files, but they won't get applied until you restart the server. So make sure that you restart the server before you test anything. And I know it may seem excessive to say that this mod is the single best mod, but I fully stand behind that, because this is one of the only mods that increases the chance of players playing together. It makes the server transparent, so people can look from Discord and see what's happening in the server without even being there themselves, and that is so incredibly powerful. The effects that that has in the long run for player interactivity is profound. Do not underestimate it. All you need to do to test the mod is just turn your server on. You don't even need to log on to the server and say anything, because if the mod is working, it's gonna send some variant of the confirmation message that the server is turning on, and then that it is successfully turned on, AKA people can now log into it. And this part is also really useful. And that's the gist of it. If you want to support my work, then consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server from Zap Hosting. They offer BepinX servers, so I know with certainty it works with their service. If you're interested in that, then go to their website and use my link, JP Valheim. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you want more Valheim content on YouTube, then all you have to do is like this video or any other video about Valheim, and then YouTube will start dishing it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!